My kids just came in, so you might hear a little bit of um, chattering in the background. <laughs> We'll get started in just a minute once everyone is let in from the waiting room. Thanks for coming, everybody. You want to grab your pencil and your paper and um, whatever you want to draw with. I think we're just going to go ahead and get started now. So, I am Danica. My name is Danica Novgorodov, and welcome to the Drawing Comics About Nature workshop. Um, I'm really excited to do some drawing with you tonight. And thank you to the Believer for doing these awesome workshops and. Also, especially thank you to the wonderful, brilliant Kristen Radke for inviting me to do this. Um, for anyone just joining, you can introduce yourself in the chat by saying where you are and one thing that you love about nature. I am currently in Louisville, Kentucky, and I love walking in the woods, any woods, especially if there are mountains, but we don't really have mountains here. Um, I uh, make graphic novels mostly. I make comics, um, some other kinds of text and image combinations. Um, and I'm going to show you a few images of my work to get started um, while everyone's coming in. But in the meantime, you can get your materials ready, paper and pencil or pen, um, something to write down some ideas. We're going to do a little brainstorm at the beginning. Um, so a piece of paper to write on and then another piece of paper to draw on. Or you can draw on you know, digitally, if you've got that. Um, and yeah, so I'm going to start by sharing my screen and showing you all um, some of my images first. So these are some of my books. These are my graphic novels. Um, Long Way Down is my most recent one. And then uh, the two in the middle, Undertaking Lily Chen and Slow Storm, I wrote myself and illustrated and I illustrated all of these. And, um, oops. So this is A uh, Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds was, um, came out just in October. And it takes place almost entirely in an elevator, which is not really drawing nature. Um, but uh, it, um, it um, has, so I, it takes place mostly in an elevator but I still try to include some scenes that have like these elements of nature because that's what I love to draw the most. So like these, these kind of epic uh, sunsets and even though it's a very urban graphic novel, um, you know, scenes of urban parks with these giant sycamore trees that I love. This is from Brooklyn. And my first graphic novel is called Slow Storm, my first published graphic novel. Um, and it takes place in Kentucky during tornado season, which I mention now because I just moved to Kentucky this year after being in Brooklyn for 16 years. And it is tornado season right about now. So it's, that's kind of on my mind. Um, and right now, at the moment, I'm collaborating with a science journalist, Mira Subramanian, on a graphic novel about climate change that focus, focuses on young climate activists. And so that's a topic that's been on my mind for several years. And these are a couple pieces from other comics I've made about nature and comics, um, I mean, and climate in the past. Um, but the reason that I'm interested in making art about climate change really comes from my own deep feeling of a connection to nature or you know, enjoyment of nature. Ever since I was a kid, just one of my favorite things is to get out in the woods or a park and just walk you know, whenever I can. So that's what make, made me want to do this um, workshop with you. And I also just really enjoy drawing landscapes, um, trees, animals, landscapes. You can be kind of loose and expressive in a way that I find is a little bit harder to do for me when I'm drawing people or interiors, which you know require 
a little bit more attention to perspective and human made objects. So this is a comic that I made a few years about, ago about ecotourism. And this part is about uh, swimming with piranha in Colombia. I just wanted to show that because that, uh, that was really fun to draw. It has the kind of landscapes and the animals and stuff. So those are just a few examples of my work. Um, let me stop, sh oops, stop sharing my screen. Okay. Um, so we're gonna get started drawing our comics. So I hope that everyone has something to draw with. And let's start with, um, we're gonna start with brainstorming some ideas um, about the story that you wanna tell in your comic. So we're gonna write down three different ideas and then out of those three ideas, you're gonna choose your favorite one to draw your comic about. So um, get out a little you know, pen or, pen or pencil and Okay, so the first prompt is write down a place in nature that you love or that is very special to you or meaningful to you in some way. Um, it could be somewhere out in the wilderness or somewhere in a backyard or in a city park. Um, it could be somewhere you only went once, but it sticks in your memory for some reason. I'll just give you a half a minute to do that. Okay, so the so the second the second prompt is write down an experience in nature or something you saw in nature that amazed you. And if you can't think of something for all of all three of these prompts, it's that's totally fine. You only need one idea that you're gonna to choose to make your comic from. But these are just some three prompts. So something in nature that amazed you. And then the third one is write down an experience in nature or something that you saw in nature that scared you. So I saw that there are a few people that just joined. So the three prompts, I'll just repeat them one more time. The first one is write down a place in nature that you love or that is very special or meaningful to you and for some reason. The second one is write down an experience in nature or something you saw that amazed you. And the third is something in nature that scared you. So then once you've written those down, choose one of those ideas that you'd like to draw your comic about. We're just gonna do a one page comic. So, you know, it doesn't have to be super long. Um, it could just be kind of a vignette or a brief memory, but choose one of those ideas. And you can um, just jot down a few notes about what comes to mind about that idea uh, of what you'd like to draw. And I'll give you just a couple minutes to, to write down a few ideas. And if you'd like to, you can put a short phrase or like a sentence in the chat about the idea that you've chosen, the topic you've, you wanna make your comic about. While you do that, I'm going to switch over to my drawing table over here. Turn on the camera. And I'm 
All right, so let's see. All right, so once you've chosen your idea, we're going to start drawing. So you, um, so we're going to make a five panel comic. I'll show you a little sketch of what I have in mind. Here's the um, kind of the format we're thinking about doing. And if you have a different idea than this, you can totally go with that. This is, this is just um, what I'm thinking of doing. It's, you can feel free to deviate, go your own way. Um, we're gonna take about five minutes for each, uh, for, to draw each panel on here. And I will, I'll time it and I'll let you know when, when to move to the next panel. Um, so the first panel, I'll just give you a brief overview and then I will remind you at each five minute point uh, what, the, what the prompt is for the next one. But just to give you an overview in this first top panel, this is the larger panel and we're gonna do an establishing shot in that panel. <clears throat> and this shows where the story takes place. So usually in a comics, um, an establishing shot is sort of a wide angle exterior um, shot introducing the location. So um, you can include a caption with that. You can include your characters or maybe just the landscape. Um, so for example, so my, um, I'm gonna make my comic about the time, I'm gonna choose the, um, the, the thing in nature, the experience in nature that I had that scared me. And I'm gonna draw my comic about um, the time that my, my partner and I got attacked by monkeys on a mountain in China. <laughs> so, so for example, in my first establishing shot, I'm gonna draw like the, the landscape of the, the big mountains. And I'm gonna include kind of an introductory caption with that um, kind of setting the scene. So, and then in panel two, you're gonna int introduce your characters if you haven't done, done that already. Um, and they're going to be, you're going to put your characters in action in that second panel, doing something in that place. Like what, what were, what were you, maybe the characters, you, maybe there are other characters as well, but what, what are you doing in that place? Or what are the characters doing? Um, what brought you there? Why, you know, why are you in this place in nature? Um, in the third, third and fourth panel, you're going to, um, it's going to be kind of the climax of your little your very short story. So if you chose the first prompt of something of a place that you love in nature in that in those two um, in those two panels, you're going to show what it was about that place that made you fall in love with that place or what, you know, what made it very special to you. Um, if you chose the second, uh, you know, the second or the third prompt, you're going to show in those two panels, the thing that amazed you or that scared you. And then in the last panel, that's going to be kind of a concluding panel where maybe you show something like how did how did that story end? How how did the um, experience end? Or what maybe something you took away from that experience? So you're going to have that final panel. Um, again, if you want to go, you know, just kind of do your own thing, that's totally fine. But I'll give you some little prompts in case you're having trouble thinking of something. So we are going to start with our first first. Um, we're going to start drawing. Um, by drawing our, our five panels. So take your piece of paper and draw your five panels. Maybe I can switch my camera over to my, to my drawing table so I can draw along with you. Um, so start by drawing your five panels and then I'm gonna set a timer for five minutes and we're gonna start on the first panel, which is your establishing shot, uh, showing where your story takes place. So fill that, fill that establishing shot with uh, lots of nature.
I'll start the start that timer. Oops. There we go. This is going to be kind of interesting for me because I usually draw with a pencil and then a sketch and then go over it with pen and then go over it with watercolor. But since we only have a few minutes for each panel here, I'm just going to go for it with pen and it's going to be kind of fun for me and freeing in a way. <laughs> If anyone has any questions, you can put it in the chat and I will try to, uh, try to answer them. I don't know if I can like double task of drawing and talking at the same time, but I can try. <laughs> I'm just going to use colored pencils and pen here, which is not my normal um, medium, but I don't really have time to get out the watercolors. That would make a mess. So I have a caption in my first one that says, in 2009, Jonathan and I climbed Mount Emeshan. It rained most of the 22 miles. All right, so we've 
almost up for our first five minutes for our first panel there. We can make it pretty loose and sketchy because there's not a, not a whole lot of time to work on each one. So in, um, in the second panel, if you're ready to move on, you can certainly spend more time on that first one if you need to. But just to remind you, in the second panel, you're gonna introduce your characters, which is maybe yourself and whoever else is in your story, um, if they're not in the first one. And you're gonna show your character in action. Um, you know, what is your character doing in this natural space? What brought them to that place? What's their reason for being there on that day and at that time? You know, what, what's going on in your story with your characters at this time? If you wanna go ahead and get started on your second panel. Danica, we have a question in the chat, um, wondering if when you start drawing a panel, do you start with the text or do you start with the image? Um, I usually actually start with the text just so I know that I have room for it. Otherwise, I always forget to leave enough space. Um, but you know, it's, it's easier when you're working with pencil or something that you can erase. Right now I'm working just with pen, so um, I can't really make too many adjustments, but normally, yeah, I would start with the, with the text just to make sure I leave enough room for it. Lauren is wondering if you have any advice for people who are just learning to draw comics or any beginners. Um, yeah, I would just read a lot of comics and kind of see what you like. And, um, you know, just experiment with different media, try out different things, you know, see if you like working in pen or pencil or whatever, um, you know, digi digital medium that, um, try a bunch of different things and make some mini comics and share them with your friends. That's always really fun. There's tons of resources for like how to, you know, how to staple your own comics. Um, how, you know, where, how to print them. Rizwan is wondering what kind of colored pencils you use. Oh, I have a couple different kinds. I have these, um, the Prismacolor ones are like a little more oily and, and like thick. Um, and let me see if 
I can find one. I have another kind that's a little bit more um, like dry and sketchy. I forget what they're called. Oh, they're the Prismacolor Very Thin. Those are like the drier kind. And then the Prismacolor, I don't know, this one says Premier. I guess those are those are kind of like more um, more like thick and oily a little bit. So yeah, I guess most of them are Prismacolor. All right, I didn't quite finish mine there. My second panel there, but. Maybe I'll come back to it with a little foliage. <laughs> um, but uh, if you are ready to, we can move on to the third panel. So in this panel, you're gonna show your, show your character, the third and fourth panels, and I'll, I'll give you a five minute warning for each of those. But the, um, the third, third and fourth panel, you're gonna show your character having a, that transformative moment, kind of the climax of your story. So um, if you're doing the first prompt about the place that you love, then you know what happened in that place that made that place really special for you or what made you fall in love with that place. And if you're doing the second or the third prompt about something in nature that amazed you or that scared you, then you would show that thing that amazed you or scared you. So um, we'll take 10 minutes total for those and I'll let you know um, kind of when the five minute mark is. And you can add word bubbles or narration boxes, captions, thought bubbles.
Oh yeah, someone just asked, could I read my bubbles? Um, so my, my story is, uh, so in the first panel here, we're walking up the mountain and this man up here um, asks, would you like to buy a monkey stick? $5. And it's like a bamboo stick. So this is me and I say, it's a ripoff. And Jonathan says, no thanks. And then in the third bubble, I say, um, do you see that? And I'm trying to draw like a gang of monkeys approaching us. Down the mountainside. You guys, this is a really different um, method of drawing than I'm used to <laughs> using. I almost never, I'm like a really slow drawer. So this is fun for me to try something totally new. It's just like a quick pencil, I mean a pen, pen drawing. All right, so for the fourth panel, you're gonna continue your, um, your, the climax of your story. So we're, uh, so if, you have, if you're ready, go ahead and move on to your fourth panel. You show that transformative moment of either what you love about, that, about the place or what amazed you or scared you.
Danica, someone's wondering, they, they're not sure how to draw a thought bubble. Do you have any suggestions? Oh yeah. Um, so a thought bubble is usually like, kind of like a cloud, a little cloud, kind of like that. And then instead of a, a, like a word bubble till, you would just put some little dots like that. So in my fourth panel, I, my, the me character says, we should have gotten the monkey stick. So we didn't know what the monkey stick was for when we started climbing the mountain. And we were surrounded by macaque monkeys who wanted our food, I guess. They were like the size of really fat squat toddlers. It was very frightening. All right, so if you are ready, we'll go ahead and move on to our fifth panel. So in the fifth panel, we'll, it'll be uh, some sort of concluding panel. So how does your story end? What, what did you take away from that experience or that place? Um, you know, if it's something that scared you, maybe how did you get out of there or if it's something, you know, if, it, if your story is about a place that you love, then, you know, is it somewhere that you still go back to or is it somewhere that you'll, you remember for, you know, for still, like, how do you remember it now? Or um, what does it mean to you now? Or has it changed? Um, so some kind of concluding panel to your story. And then after the next, few minutes we're gonna um anyone who wants to will be invited to share
Someone just asked, do I typically use references when I draw? Yes. <laughs> I almost always use photographic reference. So this is, um, this is different for me because I'm just drawing from my imagination and it's, it's really fun. But it's not how I typically draw. I'm a little bit um, attached to using photo reference. So my fourth panel says, for Jonathan's birthday, I made a painting of the monkey. And I can put, maybe I'll add at the bottom, it's his favorite painting. All right, so just take a few more seconds to, to finish up, or I mean, you can keep working as people share, but we're gonna share in a few minutes here, in a, just like a few more seconds here. Anyone who's ready to share. Mine's not quite done, but what can you do? <laughs> Usually takes me about a whole day to draw one page of a comic. So this is this is like a fun, fun exercise. All right. So we are going to share share comics now for anyone who would like to. Um, if you'd like to share, you can raise your little zoom hand with the um, with the raise hand button. Um, and when you, if you are chosen to share, then um, you can tell us what your name is and where you are, and we would love to see what you've made. Wait, do I share? Yes, I think you, you've been chosen to share. Let's see what you got. I don't know if you can see it clearly. You can see it a little bit, yeah. Can you, can you tell us what's going on in it? 65 million years ago in Hell Creek, the king of North America, T-Rex, is prowling through the forest. It sees a triceratops porosis. And then, it, then um, it's a little overview, like the, where the battle is just beginning between the T-Rex and the triceratops. Then in the last one, the Triceratops is about to lose um, and get eaten by the T-Rex. And the T-Rex like grabs on to the neck of the Triceratops trying to kill it and eat it. That's wonderful. That's great. Thank you. That's, I love that you've used the prehistoric nature in your comic. Very cool. Um, Oh yeah, and I'm in Rockland, California, and I love uh, everything prehistoric and bird watching. Great, thank you. Um, I'm up, I guess. Um, hi, I'm Allison, um, and I um, drew about a time nature scared me a little, and also made me a little bit sad. Um, sorry. Um, I, um, I don't, my drawing isn't great. Um, I drew about a time a couple summers back where I was outside on the patio and I found two baby birds that had been knocked out of their nest and how I tried to make the nest and I contacted a friend to help me try and rehome them later during the day um, and Unfortunately, we could only save one and yeah. Yeah, thank you. That's beautiful. I love the color you used in that. Oh, thank you.
Hi. Hi. Um, so go? I drew about the time when we were in the woods in Maine and mom woke me up in the middle of the night and I heard this awful like screeching noise <laughs> and we went outside and there were these screech owls like screaming in the tree and it was pretty scary <laughs> and it was quite an experience um yeah you yeah. can see that you can see that this is close up and the reaction shot uh that's the overview we're in Providence, Rhode Island. Okay, thank That's you. Nicholas and Martha, thank you. I love the um, sound effects you've got there. Those are really Thanks. impactful. Thanks. Um, so, no, you go. Okay, fine. Uh, so I did a time when nature uh, scared me. And here I have an overview. I think you can pretty much well see it. Yeah. And uh, so I hate deep ends. I have a big fear of deep ends of anything. And I am scared that there are things that are gonna come there and grab me down. <laughs> so I try to avoid them at all costs. But then uh, during the summer, we go to a lake and we have to take like deep water swimming tests. So I have to take it and then uh, I overcome my fear every single year of the deep end. Great. Great, thank you. Deep ends are a very um, good metaphor for life. We're in uh, Montclair, New Jersey. Oh, thank you. Hi everybody, I'm Richard X. Bennett calling from Brooklyn, New York, and mine also has a monkey theme, and it's called RxB and the Monkey. And in the first one, I'm in India, and these are supposed to be caves and, and the foliage. The next one, I'm drinking a Coke, and a monkey is looking at my Coke. Then the monkey goes, grr, at me. Then I say to the monkey, you take it. And then the monkey, the last panel, the monkey is drinking the Coke and saying, I love tourists. <laughs> Hi, Richard. Thank you. That's awesome. Hi, Danica. How are you? Good. Nice to, <laughs> nice to see you. <laughs> That's wonderful. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Joanna. I am in Portland, Oregon. Uh, let me just make this bigger. Uh, yeah, so I, I'm uh, in Portland, Oregon, and I did uh, a place in nature that's really special to me. And it, it wasn't really like a story about what happens to me, but it's something that I always think about. Um, when I go to visit the Oregon coast and I look at tide pools, I sort of wonder like, this says right here, do tide pools know that um, they're not alone? And mm -hmm. then I'm sort of zooming in on a tide pool and saying like, do they know that there are other tide pools that are nearby? And do they look at the sky like we look at the sky, you know, when we're looking for other planets, that kind of thing. And then I'm zooming in even more um, and it says wondering, and then I zoom out to the earth in space and it says hoping, hoping with a question mark. <laughs> very cool. I love that. I love thinking about the consciousness of nature. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, very awesome. it's just sort of, you know, when you sit there on a tide pool and you're like, do they know? Yeah, <laughs> totally. Hi. Hi, is it my turn? Yes. Okay. Hi, Danica. Hi, nice to see you. You too. All right. So mine was a scary thing. And so I've drawn the stream and it's winter and the ice, it's iced over. Okay. And then along comes my daughter, Katrina. And is, am I on the right one? Yeah. And she's like, I'm on my way. See you later. And then she's thinking, Oh, I just love walking on the ice. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, uh-oh is right. <laughs> and then the next one, she falls through. And this actually happened for real. Mm -hmm. And she falls through and she's yelling, help. No. <laughs> <laughs> and then I come running to 
save her, to pull her out and give her a hug and say, um, I have you. You'll be okay. <laughs> That's great. So, it's very dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. I'm Francie. I'm from New Hampshire. I'm related to Danica by marriage. <laughs> And um, so my best wishes. Thank you. Oh, hi. this is nice. Oh, hi. My name's Ann. I'm from Las Cruces, New Mexico. I kind of did all the uh, prompts in that I love the Oregon Mountains. So that's the top one with um, desert poppies. And then um, I start out on the hike and say to the needles, which is the top of the organs. And the things that scare me are there's cactus everywhere. And then we've seen rattlesnakes up there, but I made it to the top. And my quote is, if you need the beauty of nature, you must accept the fear and, the, and tolerate the pain. Yes, I love that. Oh, wow, that's good. Thank you. Thank you. I love your inking style too. Hi. Oh, whoa. Okay. I don't know how I can do this because I was, I'm experimenting brand new with drawing on an iPad, but so there's three screens, but the first one says last summer, the snapping turtles began to hang out with us and didn't seem afraid to be seen like normally. Oh, wow. Cool. I can't. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, we can see it. And then it goes, um, one day I was sitting on the de desk, on the dock, upset and sad, and one of them that we eventually named Cranky swam up and stared at me a long time, like as if to say, I got you. And so we began to look for her each day. Cool. And then the last one is... Uh, in late August, we were beginning to hang out with a crowd of them and name them. And then I wrote some names and we realized we hadn't seen Cranky in several days. But as August moved to September and the turtles came to see us less and less, we never saw Cranky again, but look what we found. Oh, <laughs> that's great. I love that last panel with the hand. That's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, thank you for sharing. And um, if you didn't get to share, you can post on social media and we would love to see it. You can tag me. I am at Novgorodov, which I know is really hard to spell. So maybe Kristen can put that in the chat. <laughs> Um, and at Believer Mag on Instagram. Um, and there's a hashtag, you can put hashtag Friday Night Comics. And thank, every, thank you everyone who came and we drew and thanks to everyone who shared. It was um, lovely to see you all and to draw with you. Let's give Danica a hand, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was great. Thank you. 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 Thank you.